You might have been there before. <laughs> Felt like that. Um, as I have been preparing for this season and uh, just getting ready for these messages, we've been learning about Advent. And maybe this was a new um, thing for you to learn about and what it just really means to push past the modern Christmas mindset, right? Which is kind of about aspire to acquire. Really, that's, that's what the Christmas is, getting more, bigger, better. I've got to have it all. And instead, we've been learning to kind of slow down and kind of clear the clutter and really look at what is the true meaning of Christ's coming at Christmas. Because it's so easy to get busy with all the prepping and all the shopping and all the partying that we actually miss the wonder and the joy and the beauty of what God has done for us. So we've invited you to go a little countercultural, if you will, this series, right? To, to join this conspiracy, because it is a conspiracy to do something opposite of how the world is moving, to push back against the holiday stress and the craziness that kind of takes over this year. And so today, to read our Advent reading this morning, I have asked Karen. She is Karen and Jeff Branham. They have two daughters, Sarah and Abby. They're not coming up, I've been told, but Karen is going to come, and she's going to help us today read our Advent reading. I don't know. I'm sure she's coming. There she is. Yeah. She needs a microphone. Do we have a microphone for her? Somebody will get me a microphone for her. They're getting one. Just come on up and... So she, her and her husband, Jeff, Karen is a, a part of our media team. She works every weekend helping you see the points and the graphics and worship, and she does all kinds of things. She's, she is faithful in this house, and so we honor her and celebrate her. We bless you and your family. Thank you so much. And so today is the third week of Advent where we are, it's commonly referred to as Rejoice Sunday. And so again, we're going to light the, the purple candles of hope and peace, but we're also going to today add to it this pink candle of joy. And our scripture reading is found in Luke chapter 1, verses 49 through 45. We're reading it from the New Living Translation today, and this is referred to as Mary's song. This is what Mary spoke out as the angel of the Lord appeared to her and told her that she would carry the Christ. So go ahead, Karen. You are blessed because you believe that the Lord would do what he said. Mary responded, Oh, how my soul praises the Lord, how my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he took notice of his holy servant, of his lowly servant girl. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the mighty one is holy, and he has done great things for me. Amen. 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 Hey, can we pray? Yeah, you can give her a hand clap. That's good. That's good. Thank you, Karen. Father, we are so grateful today that that you came that you that you stepped out of glory and that you came to be with us thank you for for sending your son god to redeem us to restore back to us all that had been lost and so today god we choose to take you at your word we love you we honor you we are eternally grateful for you and it's in Jesus' name that we pray amen amen i want to say before we get going i am loving hearing your stories of how you are pushing back against the conspiracy. One of my favorite things through this series has been your texts and your calls, just telling me ideas that you've had and how God has helped you to push back against the conspiracy. Some of you have been being very intentional with your Advent readings, and you've been so thankful that every day you could start out reading this scripture with your family, and that it's just really prompted great discussions and questions from your littles asking about the details of Christ. And so it's helping us, I believe, to slow down, to clear the clutter from our lives so that we can worship more fully. And so then last week we learned how we can give differently, right? We're going to spend less on us and we're going to give more. And we want to learn to give relationally the way Christ was given to us. We're not just given material things. And so Advent reminds us that it's not just about loving the people in our lives. It is about that. We want to love our spouse better and our kids better. But you know what? It's also about loving those outside of your circle better. And that's really the challenge for us all, right? Learning to love all. And that's what we heard in the story when the wise men came in, when the children were doing their nativity. It was from Luke. 
he was talking about how Jesus came first to who? The outsiders. He came to the shepherds who were out in the field. He came to these wise men in a far off land. He came to these people with the angels proclaiming the good news of the gospel. So today we're going to learn how to love all. So look at your neighbor and tell them, say, you got to love them all. And now look at your second choice and tell them, you got to love them all. And here's the challenge in a culture like ours right now. It's difficult to love them all because it seems like there are so many sides, right? I mean, there's a side, you wear a mask, you don't wear a mask. You voted Democrat, you voted Republican. You believe there's a conspiracy, you don't believe there's a conspiracy. Anywhere you go, there is a side. And so it's very difficult it's for us to love all. It seems like it's very easy to kind of push people aside and they're in that category. And I think it's important for us to really understand what that means to love all. But that word love, it's kind of overused, right? We use that word for everything. It's kind of a one size fits all. Like I was looking up words that have a lot of meanings for it. So the Eskimos, they have 30 words for the word snow. That's impressive. So I was thinking for love, we, you know, we have love or admire or appreciate, but those are kind of different. But love means different things because I can say, I love my husband. You love your wife. Uh, but I also love pizza. It's kind of different. I love playing golf, but I also love sleeping in. So, you know, you got, there's the same word, but they're di very different meanings. And so we use this word love in all types of ways. And one of the things that is so different about the Christmas season is Jesus doesn't just tell us about love. He shows it. He actually shows us what love is. And he demonstrates his love for you and for me. God did that. In fact, one of the most famous verses in the Bible is found in the book of John, chapter 3, Verse 16, and you may know it if you've grown up in church, and even if you don't grew up in church, but you know Tim Tebow, you may know it. And it says, for God so loved the world that he gave, he loved and he gave his one and only son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but what? Have eternal life. God demonstrated his love by sending Jesus into the world. Think about this, guys. The God of eternity the God that created the cosmos in the sky the universe that's all around us the God who spoke and stuff appeared that guy he stepped out of eternity he left all of the splendor all of the glory all of the majesty all of the the prestige all of that he stepped out of eternity and into our world so that we could know his love that's amazing to me. He comes into the grit and into the daily grind of our lives just so he can show us what it means to be loved. That's beautiful. See, love requires action. It's got to be more than just lip service. How many of you are just tired of people talking about how much they love you? Hey, let's put some action behind that talking. One of the core values here at Liberty is that you, we believe you were created by God for a very specific purpose. And we believe the ultimate call on your life is for you to make a difference for eternity. You're not just here on this planet to pay bills and survive as you barely get by and you trudge into church because it's your civic duty a couple of times a month. Just, you know, here I am. There's got to be more. Than, I mean, there's got to be more. And if that's the life that you're living right now, the good news is, is God has more for you. We believe that you were created so that you could know Jesus in a very real way. Not just know about him, but know him. Also, that you would find freedom in your life. That you would grow daily in your faith that you would discover the God-given gifts that he has placed on the inside of you, that you could serve faithfully his kingdom, and then boldly you would walk forward in your purpose. And this weekend, as we talk about loving all the way Christ loved us, I've kind of linked this word love to the word legacy. Legacy 
is what people remember when you're not here anymore. And so here we are taking a end of the year offering for our future. We're unveiling our kids building that we believe is our next step here at Liberty. And it's also the final week of Advent. Well, Christmas Eve will be the final week, but it's our final Sunday of Advent where we are learning to love all. And I believe that we are called to live a legacy of love for those all around us. To live our lives in such a way that others will be impacted for eternity. Tomorrow, December 14th, is a horribly defining day for my family. It would be four years ago tomorrow that it was the worst day of my life. And a lot of you were here. You've lived through this journey with us. If you're new to our story, this is a part of our story. And on this day, I had gotten up like every other day, taken Braden early for tutorials, came back, got Preston and I's daughter, Jessica Faith, and we're driving to school. Talking about, you know, Christmas. They had Christmas parties at school. Talking about their, a friend she wanted to go see on Christmas Day to give a gift. And here we are just talking. And I look up and I have a head-on collision with a car. And I survived. But my girl, she went to heaven. And although she's gone from this earth, her legacy remains. In her six, almost one month short of seven years of life, my Jessica left a legacy. There are things that we remember about her even though she is no longer here presently anymore. There are people that she impacted while she was here. There are people who have been impacted since she was gone when I've been able to go and share her story and kids have come to know Jesus. We've created places out at camp even to commemorate and celebrate her life. We have Jessica's Place, we have the uh, Faith Cabin, we have the JFB Aquatic Center. And I know that we don't like to think about our mortality. We don't. But here's the truth. If the Lord tarries, one day, you and I, we will leave a legacy. Your physical existence here on earth will end but your legacy it remains and so my question to you today is how will you live a legacy of love the bible says in psalms 112 verses 5 through 6 it says good will come to those who are generous and lend freely those who conduct their affairs with justice those who are righteous will be remembered Forever, See, righteous doesn't mean that you're perfect in your own actions. It just means that you've decided to choose the right path, giving Jesus control of your life. So what I want you to get out of this is it matters how you live your life. And God says, you know what? I'm going to honor it. The good that you do, I'm going to honor it and I'm going to bless it. Good will come to those who are generous. I'll make sure good comes to you. Why would God do that? Because he wants us to do it. And he knows we got to have a little incentive. So God gives us this desire inside of every one of us. Secular scientists have confirmed that in, in every one of us, the highest need that can be met is the, inside the human heart is the need to leave a legacy. We all want something to go beyond us. See, a legacy is not just what people remember though a legacy is also what God remembers he remembers it when you're gone look at Hebrews 6 10 it says God is not unjust he will not forget your work and the love you have shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help them. See, this is the core belief at, at Liberty. This is, should be your core belief as a follower of Christ. And we've done this all throughout this year. We've had food distributions. We've sent mission things to all of our people overseas that we love. We're outreach to the homeless, volunteering at the food pantry. The dream team each week who comes in to serve. God says, hey, I'm not going to forget. When you have shown that you loved me by helping others. 
by doing something for somebody else. That's the legacy that you leave that's bigger than you. He's not going to forget when you go to church today, when you go to eat after church today, and you leave a huge Christmas tip for your server. He's going to remember that because you know what? You are showing that you loved him by helping somebody else. Anytime you've blessed somebody else in Jesus' name, he says, I'm not going to forget the love that you showed me as you have helped my people. You got to remember, God loves people. That's who he sent Jesus for. He didn't send Jesus for our programs, for our policies, for our products. No, it was for people. And so this year, we are challenging you to join this Advent conspiracy. Let's give more relationally. Let's give more to people. It's almost like we want you to experience Christmas upside down this year. Looking to give rather than to receive. Looking to give for our future, to leave a legacy. See, God doesn't forget your work. The love that you have shown him by helping his people. Well, why does he get so involved in that page? I mean, it seems like he's got other things he could do. I think it's because he knows that if he didn't put that desire on the inside of us to leave a legacy and we didn't get the satisfaction when we do it, you know that, that endorphin that kind of kicks in when you do something good and they smile or they like it and you feel good. He knows that if he didn't give us that little shot of pleasure in our emotions, you know what we would do? Our gravitational pull is towards selfishness. If you leave us all alone, if you leave me alone and I don't hear a message like this every once in a while and I'm not challenged to, to join this conspiracy and fight back against the normal empire of more, then you know what? I default to selfishness. To me and mine, us four and no more. Bless us, Lord. And I don't even care what's happening to everybody else around me because I'm only con concerned about 257 County Road 2190 and I don't know what the rest of y'all are going to do. My parents founded Liberty Church over 36 years ago. And it was founded to be a house of prayer, to be a house for the nations, to be a house so that people could come and find hope. And you know what? We forget sometimes that what we do for ourselves, it's going to die with us. But what we do for others, it lives on beyond us. And so their legacy, it's living on right now in you, in I. Like we stand on the shoulders of the work that was done so many years ago. <laughs> to provide a great church experience, a, worship, a place where you can come in and worship. But I hope this doesn't hurt your feelings, but this is what you got to know. You're not my primary focus. I, I'm, the church is not for the church. The church is for the world. God so loved the world that he gave. He didn't so love the church. He didn't so love the religious people. He didn't so love the people who are like, I got to sit on my seat every time. You're in my row. No, God so loved the world. And I think we have seen this now in this year of COVID-19 craziness more than ever before that the world is here and the church exists for the world. I see it every week. I saw it the other day, Friday, I had to go get some food down at the, just because I drive the, have on the insurance, I guess, for the bobtail truck at Operation Review. So I drive down to Houston, get all this food. I come back to the food pantry. There are people, and it's you people, it's volunteers here. They're coming out of the woodwork for everywhere to serve our community to wrap up toys like they get to be Santa there's a, well, Monday I went and got thousands and thousands of toys we picked them up they're just given to people the church exists for the world it's more than just us in this building guys it's for the people outside of these walls and so we believe our next step here at Liberty is to build a building for our future for our kids for the generations that were to come so it doesn't just stop here we believe that God has called us not only to have this house, but to open additional campuses that you'll be hearing about throughout the years to come. Life-giving churches all over Southeast Texas where people find a relationship with God and not just a religious ritual. Places where marriages are healed, where teenagers come off drugs, where families are restored, where addiction is broken, where mental health is found and Jesus is exalted. That's what we're building for. That's how we're going to live a legacy of love. I believe time is short and that there are lives on the other side of our obedience. 
And honestly, the easier thing to do right now would just be to sit back and wait. That'd be really easy, you know, just to sit back and kind of chill out because, you know, there's so many reasons and excuses to wait. First of all, we're in a worldwide pandemic. <laughs> there's that. You know, there's social unrest. The politics are extremely erratic. You don't know what's going to happen. Financial uncertainty. So it would just seem like, gosh, the easier thing to do would be just to sit back and let's just hold steady and push pause. But I really don't believe that we have time to sit back and wait and push pause because I think there's people who need the hope that we have in Jesus and we got to get busy, guys. There's so many more reasons to move forward and to advance. Did you know that this generation that we're all living in right now, this generation has seen more people come to know Jesus in the past 20 years than in all the previous 2,000 years combined? Through the gift of technology. We're able to talk to more people through technology than ever would come into a building. God is moving here on the earth and we want to partner with him. And that's why I can stand up here unapologetically before you and say, hey guys, we got to give them heaven. We can't just sit here and sit back and just wait. We got to give people heaven. And maybe you're thinking, well, Paige, it just seems like such, so big. It's like such a big thing. And I mean, I, I don't have a lot. I just got this little bit. And I understand that. I know that you can only give what you have, but here's the thing you have to understand. When all of us do a little together, we do a lot. That's the beauty of a church. That's the beauty of a family, of a community. Each one of us bring our little part together. And when all the littles are put together, it becomes a lot. And why do we do it? Because those who are righteous, they'll be remembered forever. So how do you live a legacy of love this morning? I think I got three points for you. I know that's shocking that there's three, but we got to be legacy people. So how do you know if you're one of those? And I'll tell you. Number one, legacy people have an eternal mindset. They realize that life is more than just going through these motions. It's about impacting people's lives. And we believe that someone's eternity is on the other side of your obedience. So sometimes we got to do it scared. We have a sign in our office when Preston and I took over for my parents the end of January. Uh, he was decorating, you know, and so we went to Hobby Lobby and there was a big metal sign and it said, walk by faith. Little did we know what was, you know, coming into it. And I said, babe, we need that sign and let's put it over the door because I played basketball in college and whenever you leave, you may know this football people, you know, whenever you leave, you hit the sign on your way out. And so I told him, he's just looking at me like, okay. I said, listen, when we leave, because we, you know, we're just, they've been doing this 36 plus years. We're the new kids on the block. But I said, every time we leave the office, we're going to hit the sign. We're going to, I'm walking by faith, boom, hitting the sign. Walking by faith, boom, hitting the sign. And so you have to understand, legacy people, they have an eternal mindset. We know that somebody's eternity is on the other side of my obedience. So, hey, I'm going to hit the sign and just step out. There's a COVID happening. You can't have church. What? Okay, I'm going to hit the sign, step out. <laughs> what are we going to do? Yeah, we need to get started on that kids' building. Okay, we're going to hit the sign. We're going to step out. Like, that's what we're doing. We're walking by faith. It's living this life through the lens of eternity. Look at what Jesus said in John 4, 35. He said, I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They're ripe for harvest. You and I, we have to discipline our eyes not to look at all the opposition. Not to look at all the problems. Oh, gosh, I just don't know. Listen, I know this may seem a little aggressive. It may seem like I'm kind of eh, amped up, but I'm not guaranteed the amount of years that I'm going to have on my life. I didn't get up that day four years ago tomorrow driving my Jessica to school thinking this is it. This is the last conversation I'm going to have with my kid. So I'm not guaranteed that I will not get up tomorrow morning. I'm believing I do, but if I don't, listen, do not cry for me. I will be so happy. You don't have to cry for me. You can be like, boy, that girl. You pick up the baton and you start running. That's what you do. Because we want our life to count for eternity. I'm not looking to go anywhere, just for the record. Like, I want to live a legacy of love. One of my favorite scriptures is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. I normally start at 16, but for today it's just 18. It says, so we don't look at our troubles that we can see now. Rather, we 
fix our eyes. We put our gaze on the things that cannot be seen. For the things we see now, they'll soon be gone. But the things we cannot see, they will last forever. I have never seen a U-Haul behind a hearse. You can't take all your possessions with you, all those things you're holding on so tightly. You ain't taking nary one of them with you. But you might as well leave something that will count for eternity. And that's why today we are building for our future. Our goal isn't to live on earth forever, but to leave something that does. Legacy people have an eternal mindset. And legacy people, second thing is they understand sacrifice. In fact, I've come to the conclusion that no one makes a difference without giving up something. It just doesn't happen. You just choose to do less for you so that you can do more for somebody else. Parents, you get this. We'll sacrifice. We won't get the thing we were wanting so that our kids can get the thing they wanted. This is what God did for us. He sacrificed his son. And so I'm asking, can we live a sacrificial life here on earth? I know that pushes hard against the empire of more because we want to have more, bigger, better, faster, fancier, right? But look at what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 and 20. He says, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves can break in and steal. But instead, what does he tell us? You store up treasures for yourselves in heaven. See, success is determined, I believe, by what you're willing to give up, not by what you want to keep. That's just a fact that I believe. That's a part of the Advent conspiracy, that we would live our lives in such a way that impacts the world all around us. Legacy people have an eternal mindset. Legacy people understand sacrifice. And the third and final way I believe we can live a legacy of love is legacy people, they sense an urgency. Let me say it like this. If, if you and I really want to be a legacy person, and I think you do, I think God has already put that desire in your heart, don't wait. Do it today. What are you waiting for? Call that person today. Encourage someone today. Give today. Look at what Ephesians 5, 15 and 16 says. Be very careful then how you live. Not as unwise, but as wise. Making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. We got to share our faith today. We got to be generous today. Do a random act of kindness today. See, legacy people, they make the most of every day. I was generous today. I helped someone today. I prayed for somebody today. And as we get ready to close, we're going to have a, a final offering, you know, for our future offering that we're going to take. And maybe you're here and you're like, well, I've already given online. I've already mailed a check or I'm going to give, you know, later in the week, whatever it is. And I know you may think I'm going to skirt out really quick. I would just ask that you not. Because here's the thing. I want us together as a family to thank God I mean, thank God we've made it to whatever today is, December 13th, 2020. So let's thank God together. We're going to give together, and then we're going to worship together. In our Advent reading today, this morning, it began with a powerful scripture. It's Luke 1, 45. And what's happened is um, Mary has gone to see Elizabeth. And Elizabeth is there, and Elizabeth makes this statement to Mary. She says, you are blessed, Mary. Why was Mary blessed? Because you believed that what the Lord that the Lord would do what he said. And that's how we're hitting the sign. See, God has told us that we are to have a school. He's told us that we're to have a kids program that's first class. He's, a matter of fact, he said that our kids program is supposed to be so good that, that families will come in purely for what it brings to their kids. So that tells me that there's lives, there's families that God wants to impact and he's going to use kids because all of us moms know how many Disney on ice, crazy things have we gone to, whatever it is, with your kids because they wanted to go. So we're going to put our focus on our kids and our kids are going to have the best. They're going to know Jesus in the most intense and real way. And as a result of that, there are going to be lives impacted for eternity. And so I'm believing that as we believe that what God said to do, we do it, that we will be blessed. 
just like Mary. So today I choose to obey. As I've been praying this week, I, I just feel like this is a holy moment. This is a holy day. Because we are leaving a legacy for his glory, for our future. And as we get ready to enter into this time together, I want to ask you just to kind of remain still, stay in an attitude of worship. What would it look like if today was your last day here on earth? What would that look like? Who would you call? Who would you love? Who would you encourage? Who would you forgive? What would you give? How would you bless someone at the restaurant today if this was the last restaurant that you would ever eat at? See, legacy people have this belief that today I'm going to live as if this is the last day that I will be remembered for. Why not live today on purpose? Why not live a legacy and watch what God will do? Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this amazing church family. I honor them. I thank you and I give you glory, God, for all that you have done in this house, the family that you have brought together for a common purpose, for a vision. God, it's always been about you. It's not even about liberty today. It's not even about Preston or I or my parents or anything like that. God, we honor you. This is for your glory. And so I'm asking God for you to bless this, for you to bless not only what we do, but God, how we give and how we live our lives. If you're here today and you don't know God, maybe you came